Good morning. Thank you for being here. As an artist that works with code, I'm often using tools, software programs that other artists have made. These tools are not neutral. They're always embedded with the beliefs and the biases of the people that make them. In my work, I'm really focused on how we understand ourselves as people in this moment in time. It's been interesting to watch as the NFT phenomenon has become a really big thing. In the past year or so, I saw a lot of people starting to use this technology and I had a lot of concerns about the values that it was based upon, the environmental impact, and just what kind of future is pointing us towards. So an NFT is basically a certificate of authenticity for a digital work. And this is stored on the blockchain, which is like an electronic record that can't be modified after it's made. And so I was thinking a lot about these ideas of, of authenticity, of ownership, uh, of what is valuable to own. And so I ended up making this piece uh, that was called, What Do You Want Me To Say? What do you want me to say? Everything is my fault. Everything is my fault. What do you want me to say? I like it when you take control. I like it when you take control. What do you want me to say? I feel like you understand me. I feel like you understand me. This is distributed as an NFT, so it means that the people that um, collect the work are actually sort of buying access or ownership over my voice. As we were all on Zoom and on our phones and all of our data and audio is constantly being collected by these corporations that are, you know, archiving it for purposes unknown. It felt like a gesture that was meaningful to me to kind of take back that control, to say, no, I own my digital voice and I can sell it to you if you want to own it too. Sometimes when we want to test if a technical system is working, we first try to make it say hello world. Can you say hello world? Hello world. I work with a lot of different tools in my practice, but for me, performance is always the core of it. So I did a piece called Appreciate You, and it was a, a performance for 100 people where I would appreciate them one at a time for five minutes each over Zoom. So it was distributed via NFT, and I did this in a row, so the 100 people in total took 10 hours. Thank you for being the first person. Honestly, like I'm so glad I get this opportunity to, to say this. I appreciate your outfit right now. Good care you take of your body, your sense of humor. And the rule that's kind of baked into the NFT is that if you do pass this on to someone, whether you sell it or gift it, you are required or asked to appreciate the new owner for five minutes. It is only through the human contract that the piece um, survives. It just feels good to be around you. And the way that you just kind of move through that with so much grace. That's really inspiring. Some people have started to say, if we trust in the technology, we trust in a blockchain or a digital record, that's more trustworthy than humans because it's encoded. I guess I wanted to push back on that. Maybe trust in humans is actually really valuable and necessary. Where have you been finding safety recently? Within my girlfriend. I think it was a really interesting time as we moved through the pandemic where we were both totally isolated and separated, but also hyper-connected. And so one of the pieces that I did in response to that was a piece called I Heard Talking is Dangerous. They said talking is dangerous. And so basically I made this app that was an alternative and through it we could both type and then our phones would speak using text-to-speech to each other. I was trying to see also with this interface if, if there were things we might be able to say to each other using text but looking each other in the eye at the same time. They say talking is dangerous. At a crowded supermarket, the panic was palpable. 
Anybody that can live in solitude is a powerful being. The highlight of my day has been the feeling of the sunlight on my pillow when I wake up. It's hard to hold all these different contexts in mind, but that's what art is, maybe. Most of my work, I'm trying to set up these situations that maybe destabilize the normal operating system of both our interactions or the technology around us. You know, you might imagine performance art as like you go into a gallery and someone's doing something um, and you stare at them for a while. I think that performance can happen in your everyday life. It can happen, you know, when you're on a date or when you're in your home or when you're walking down the street. I think a performance can happen even if there's no art project involved at all. Art can be a way of imagining what has not already happened but is possible. Thank you.